extra pesa TV, the table of heavenly content. So glad to have you with us. I love you so very much. We have a brand new song we're going to sing straight after that. But you've been listening to my beautiful daughter. You've been watching and listening to my beautiful daughter, Christine Jorogi, our worship leader. She's just done her first single, and it's just awesome and amazing. Did you not love that? The anointing, everything about it is just so beautiful. Very soon you're going to release the same video, but with lyrics to help you so that you can sing along. These are songs straight from the throne room of God. You can use these songs, especially when somebody's unwell and they need to be healed. You can play this song over and over again. They will surely get healed. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. So you'll be seeing a lot of new content coming your way on Trapeza TV. But first, let me just introduce, um, actually not introduce, acknowledge. Let me acknowledge those of you who've joined us. Dero is online. Blessings, my precious son. Julia Sheesh, online as well. She says, beautiful. You must be referring to that beautiful video we just played from Christy Jerome. Yeah? <laughs> Hallelujah. Maki Tess saying, I'm watching Papa. Most welcome. I love you guys so much. Flora says, wow, Lord, your loving kindness has touched my spirit. Hallelujah. God bless you, my dear. Please invite your friends. Naisi, she says, awesome video. Glory to God. Happy to see you, my dear. Love you. Hallelujah. Julia, why do you say no sound? I think the sound is on. Yes, she says sound is back now. <laughs> Glory to God. Please invite your friends and uh, tag somebody. Share this. Create watch parties. We are going to revise the topic of little faith. How you can grow your faith from the level of mustard seed to the point where it produces the result you're looking for. So with my panel here, we're going to be discussing that. But for now, we're going to worship God with a beautiful song in Swahili. And this song talks about the fact that Jesus reigns over the cherubim and that we bow to worship him as we lift his holy name and that his mercies are forever. His love is amazing. His loving kindness is forever and that we glorify him forever. Okay? It's in Swahili. Glory to God. So if you don't know how to sing it, just sing in tongues. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Joy Muniva, love you so much. God bless you.
behind us is forever. And so we glorify you, O oh precious Jesus. You reign over the cherubim. And in your presence we bow to worship. As we praise your holy name. Blessed be your name forever. Blessed be your name forever, oh precious Jesus. disciples of Jesus couldn't cast out a certain spirit. Yet the Bible says anyone who believes can cast out demons. But the disciples could not cast out a, a deaf and dumb spirit. And Jesus said because their faith was little. But these same guys grew their faith to the point where their shadows would cast out demons. Their handkerchiefs would cast out demons. They didn't have to go. They just needed to touch a piece of cloth and they would send it to the place where somebody is demonized and the demon will leave. Because they grew their faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, you can do all the great things. You can perform all the great miracles. You can get everything you need to get in your life. If only you could build your faith. Build it so that it grows. And that's what we're going to be discussing today. Glory to Jesus. So I want to thank God for our media man, Mr. Nzomo. He's the one who produced the song that my daughter just sang. That beautiful song on healing virtue. He's the one who arranged it, did all the piano, did all the recording. Apart from that, he also covered the video. He did the video coverage of that precious song. And of course you've heard Mataifa, a song that was done by Mr. Bula Bula, the great musician. It was also done by Mr. Wemon So he's a very key person in our creation of contents and we thank God for him. Now my wonderful son Dero is the one controlling the black magic. <laughs> Temi is the one that is moving us from one camera to another camera. I thank God for such a wonderful child. He's eight years old. 
but he knows a lot of things in media than I do. Glory to Jesus. And you know the Bible says our sons shall be greater than us. Those that we lead will be greater than us. My aim, even as you listen to me, is that you become greater than me. I really want to see you greater than me. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. And of course, Darrow sent his cut on set. <laughs> so now he's saying, oh my, is that the cat? <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. Kupja says, Tuko na wewe hadi. Tamati apostle. Mimi pia, nakupenda sana. Mungu akubariki. That means I love you so much. God bless you. We have an international audience, so that's why we keep translating things from our local language to English. Patrick Mateka says, watching. God bless you. All right, let me introduce my people. I've already introduced Mr. Zomo. Great musician, but he's the one who's playing the, the, the piano as well. Yeah? So I have a bunch of musicians around me. Because really, one of the biggest callings God has given me is that of worship, creating music to glorify God. Hallelujah. So let me start by introducing the beautiful girl that just sang the new song. This song is new. You're hearing it for the very first time. It's not been sung anywhere. This song we just sang. Bwana umeta malaki Juya wala ma kerubi That means Lord you reign over the kerubi Nele zako twa inama Before you we bow Tukisifu jina wako As we praise your holy name And then Rehema zako za lilele That means your loving kindness Your mercy, your mercy is forever Yeah? And then what? Your love is amazing. And then? That is, your loving kindness forever. We glorify you, precious Jesus. Alright? Very soon you'll be watching the video. In fact, after this live broadcast, we are going to be shooting the video. Oh, God bless you. All right, so that is Maya Gary, my beautiful daughter. She's so young, she's only 17. But she makes me so proud. Thank you. Beautiful child. Thank you. Glory to God. This is my elder sister's daughter. So she's really my daughter. Glory to God. If you look at her face, especially her nose, you can tell <laughs> that we are related. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but we don't know around. We, we just do. We, we know a lot, just like we know a lot. She knows a lot, but she just knows a lot. <laughs> and then I have my beautiful model here. Hi guys. Christy Jiroge, whose face you saw in the beautiful video, singing about healing. By the way, one thing about her, she has the gift of healing. Did you know that? No. <laughs> you didn't know? <laughs> she has the gift of healing, and prophetically she ended up doing her first, her first single, as a healing song. She has a very strong gift of healing in her. Now that she knows it's going to manifest mightily and it's going to touch a lot of people. Glory to God. Can we sort out our Instagram? Our Instagram seems to have gone off. Yeah, let's sort out our Instagram, please. Glory to God. So, that is the model, the lawyer, the worship leader, and uh, the healer. Yeah? Yeah. Christine Jerome, glory to God. I'm so proud of you. And then I have on my extreme end here our music director, Jehudi. I like calling her Jehudi because I love the Hebrew language somewhat. It makes me understand the Bible much better. She's called Judith Juguna. Yeah? She's our music director, very, very talented, very gifted, extremely intelligent, masters in environmental law, an extraordinary musician. Glory to Jesus. God bless you. I'm very loyal. Thank you. She's the definition of loyalty and also the definition of it's done. <laughs> yeah. It is done. When Judy does it, it's done. Glory to God. I'm so proud of you and I love you so much. Thank you. And then I have this amazing gift the world is yet to see. If you think you've seen him, not quite. Mr. Bula, Brian Mugeni Bula, originally from Uganda, but now domiciled in the Republic of Kenya. My most trusted son, an amazing man, extremely talented. In fact, all the problems he's had in life are because of his talent. 
so talented that he gets into trouble and so futuristic he's so ahead of his contemporaries that sometimes people don't take him seriously he's so ahead the things he does are so many many years ahead that later people will go like oh in music we call that glissando <laughs> or pitch bend if you find people bending their pitch it's like they've, they've suddenly woken up to the realization that so this guy was right all along yeah that's the kind of person he is. I'm so privileged to have him with me. Great producer, great saxophonist, great singer, great keyboard player, great bass player, great everything. He plays the drums. He loves the word of God. His heart is after Jesus. And that touches me. Let me tell you one thing that touches me the most is when somebody wants the things of God. For me, that's enough. There's no more I ask for. If you want the things of God, I've got the things of God. I'll give it to you. So I thank God so much for you. Mm, You're an amazing you. man. And your movie, your movie. His single is already way up there. It's already trending. The song that he did called Mataifa. The thing is already trending. Just a few days ago, he was on uh, national TV discussing that single. It's going to go to the different nations of the world in the mighty name of Jesus. And Maya's single, and now Christian single. Yeah? Um, glory to God. Why did you do a single yet you're married? <laughs> I thought singles are for single people. <laughs> That's why I haven't done one yet. I did it for the single ones. Oh, you did it for the single ones? <laughs> With a single purpose, though? <laughs> Singular purpose. Of worshipping the Lord. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to ask my wife if she can allow me to do a single. Because <laughs> I don't want her to chase me out of her bedroom. Yeah, Sing with a me. cooking stick. Sing, so <laughs> I don't want her to hit me with a cooking stick. <laughs> you know, or to hit my head with a saucepan. Until you hear the, the sound that comes from China. Pang! You know, saucepan. <laughs> so I'm also blessed to have a beautiful queen of queens here. My lovely wife. Always dressed so beautifully. I look forward to Sundays because she wears some things I like every Sunday. I really love fashion. So when, when you do fashion, you really minister to me. I love things that look good. I love when people do their hair and their nails and their lipstick and they're dressing well. And that, it just, it ministers to me. It's called dressing for beauty and glory. And my wife it exemplifies that tremendously. Glory to God. If you go to our blog, you'll find some of the things I've written there. I've done some uh, pictures and put on Apostle Joseph Allen. Org. If you go there, you'll find my beautiful model daughter, and you'll see some of the things she does, and my wife as well. Okay? And we're just going to build it up. Glory to God. All right. And I have my, uh, my, my friends just around somewhere in the studio. Jaythan is somewhere there. My mama is somewhere there praying for me. She's ever praying for me. My mom, the one who gave birth to me, she's right by my side. Glory to God. Okay, guys, are you ready for Lego Pistos? As usual, we're starting with Judy. She knows how to bring out facts. By the way, we are going to be releasing books. So the series on faith is, is ready for publication. Okay? And Judy is the one who was compiling it. I told you she's multi-talented. She's the one who was compiling the topic on faith, the different series on faith, especially, for example, Lego Pistols is one of the chapters. So very soon we're going to be releasing the published book. So the information is there, it's going to the publisher. Soon we're going to be launching a book as well. This is Trapeza, the table of heavenly contents. Books, music, name it. Revealed word, prophecy, money, everything. So let's carry on. Okay, so um, I'm going to read Little faith is because of a little amount of God's word. So little faith is because of a little amount of God's word. So if your faith is little, it's because the word of God in you is little. So if you say, why is this disease not going away? Your faith is little. It needs to grow. Then the disease will go away. All right. Wonderful. Uh -huh. uh, it is a starting point when you are a new believer. So when you're a new believer, you start with little faith. Mm -hmm. So God gives you a, a, the measure of faith when, when you get born again. Wow. So that's the one. So God gives you the measure of faith. So that the measure is that little faith. Yes. 
And God likes to start with little things. That's yeah. why he says, despise not the day of small beginnings. Yes. He only starts with small things. Uh, we mentioned last week that even you started as a sperm and an egg, microscopic. And God loves to grow things. Just like you like to grow things. You want to grow your career. You want to grow your family. You meet somebody, get married, and you're not satisfied just being the two of you. You want children. You want to grow something. If you're in ministry, you want to grow the ministry. We keep telling you, like our page, follow us on, you, on what on Instagram, on Twitter, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We want to grow this thing. Mm. It starts small, then it grows. Just stick there and get more information. Carry on. You're really helping here. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, so uh, if you, you shouldn't stay there. Mm -hmm. Like a baby can't stay a baby forever, yeah. they have to grow. Yeah. So if you have little faith, you need to hear more of God's word to grow it. You need to hear more of God's word to grow it. Mm -hmm. Mo most people pray, oh God, please increase my faith. He doesn't answer such prayers because such a prayer is contrary to his word. Mm -hmm. He's already told you how to grow your faith. Mm -hmm. Hear more. Faith comes by hearing. The more you hear, the more faith you have. Mm -hmm. So little faith can grow when you hear more. Don't stay at the level of little faith. You'll keep backsliding. You'll find yourself ever depressed, ever sad, ever resentful. The things of the flesh should become so easy for you. If you grow your faith, that means you're an ardent student of the word of God. It works. Uh -huh. So then there's a scripture here. Yeah. Matthew 6, verse 30. Uh, mm -hmm. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, mm -hmm. shall he not much more clothe you O ye of little faith. This was Jesus talking mm -hmm. to the disciples. Mm -hmm. What was the context? Um, the context was, if I recall well, someone came and asked him to tell someone to divide the inheritance. Was that the context? Mm -hmm. I got that wrong. Yeah, Matthew 6 is about the prayer. Let me, let me, yeah. let me Just get read the scripture. Yes. Just read it, yeah. Let me get the, that scripture. Yeah, usually, if I'm not able to remember parts of scripture, I just go to Google. <laughs> yeah, you know, some people think if you're a person of faith, then you should never do research. It's one of the biggest problems with the church today. Church doesn't want to do research. People don't want to read. They want God to reveal. Oh, God told me. God, But you're waiting for God to tell you, and you don't know what's in the Bible. Uh, he tells us through his word. You understand? And if God were to speak to you, if you didn't know the word of God, you'd almost think it's some strange spirit talking to you. Can you imagine God was speaking to Pharaoh and it cost a maize stalk that was thin to swallow a maize stalk that was fat. God was talking like that. You'd think that's crazy. But if you haven't read that part of scripture and you see a vision or a dream like that, you dismiss it. So for you to hear God's voice first, please, you people who love the prophetic, would you please know the Bible? Then you'll not be misled because demons, the devil also talks the same way as God. They all talk the same way. All spirits talk the same way. That's what the Bible says, beloved, be, uh, do not believe all spirits, but test them. Dokimazo. Subject them to scrutiny. Yeah? And you can only subject them to scrutiny if you know the word of God. Especially people who've been hurt. If you grew up in a, a family where there's so much pain, the desire to be prophetic is always strong in such people because the, the first and foremost, the reason they got hurt is because they're prophetic. Yeah? All prophets have to go through pain so they learn to forgive, so that they learn compassion. Then God can flow through them. They have to go through pain. You can't avoid it. All right? So the quicker you learn to forgive, the better for you. <laughs> okay? And now, because you know you're prophetic, you always want to say, oh, God told me, God told me. The angel said, ah, ah, go to the word first, then you'll avoid pitfalls. Okay, carry on. Okay. Have you found it? Yes, I found it. Uh -huh. So I'll read from uh, NIV uh -huh. for now. Matthew 6, from verse 25. Do not worry. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what mm -hmm. you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Do not worry what you'll eat, drink, or your body, what you'll wear. Mm -hmm. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Life is more than food and the body is more than clothes. Wow. 
Look at the birds of the air. They uh -huh. do not sow or reap or store away in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Feed them. Uh -huh. Are you not much more valuable than they? Uh -huh. Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Hold it. Mm -hmm. By worrying. It's not the typical thing most Christians do. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm worried about my academics. Oh, I'm worried about my family. I'm worried about my children. I'm worried about my career. I'm worried about my marriage. I'm already 28 years old. I'm not yet married. I'm worried about this. I'm worried about a job. Oh, wow, wow, wow. The Bible says be worried about nothing. Be anxious for nothing. So little faith is characteristic of worry. People with little faith will always worry. I'm worried for you. They even, they even impart their worry upon you. Yeah? <laughs> I was so worried for you. Don't you ever worry for me. I'm sorted. Oh my God. <laughs> I have faith. So you don't need to worry for me. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, I'm worried for that child. Come on. That's called little faith. Little faith is the starting point, but please don't stay there. Grow it. Uh -huh. Okay, so verse 28. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. Mm -hmm. They do not labor or spin. Hold it. That's powerful. If you ever worried about your clothes and you stepped out and you saw the flowers, that should be the end of your worry. Because that's a prophetic voice of God telling you, I will clothe you better than I clothe this thing. God talks through nature. One of the voices of God, you people who love the prophetic, one of the voices of God is nature. That's why the Bible says you are without excuse. Because the invisible things of God, Romans chapter 1, the invisible things of God are made manifest by the things he has created. So that you're without excuse. He talks through nature. So he says, look at the flowers. If God clothes them that way, he'll give you clothes. If God has given it a house, a casing, he'll give you a house. Look at that. That's faith now growing from little to big. So don't worry about not having money. Because he said the birds, have you ever seen a thin bird or a thin chicken? You people raise, you know, even this, the chickens that you that just roam around. Ever seen one thin because they didn't eat? God has a way of feeding them. He instructs a worm to wake up early in the morning for the birds to eat. You see a worm wiggling, thinking, "Why are you going, Mister Worm? Oh, don't worry about me. You're always worrying, you little faith. Why are you always worrying about things? I'm going out there on a mission. God has sent me to wiggle around. And worms have a way; they, they, they produce a certain, a certain spectrum of light." That attracts birds and the things that you eat them. So God already has provision for you. But because your faith is little and you are underinformed, you're suffering for nothing. Carry on. This is sweet. Isn't it sweet, you people? Verse 29, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor uh -huh. was dressed like one of these. Mm -hmm. Then now verse 30. If yeah. That is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire. Will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Mm -hmm. Will he not much more clothe you? Will he not much more give you a house, an inheritance? Will he not do those things you desire? But the problem here is your faith is little. So God cannot operate with little faith. He operates with great faith. But he starts with little, so that you can grow and grow. As you're hearing this, your faith is growing. And this is what God is waiting for, for the faith of the bride to reach a point where they, the bride can invite Jesus. You know, people think Jesus will just appear with a trumpet. Right. Those who are sinful, to hell. Those who are holy, up here with me. Michael, get them. Uriel, burn them. Angel Rose, get me the sinners. Get them. Right. All arise. <laughs> All the saints arise. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is seated upon the throne. And as was written and pronounced by the holy prophets, it has come to pass that the sinners are burning and the saints are celebrating and rejoicing with a groom. No, it's not going to happen like that. 
Uh, we, we'll create movies like this with Mr. Mwema. We'll <laughs> this is what's going to happen. The Bible says the spirit, the spirit of God and the bride, the bride whose faith has grown, will say, now Lord Jesus come. We are ready. Then he will come. So you are the ones who determine the second coming of Jesus. But you said, oh, Jesus said that not even angels know, but you are higher than angels. The Bible says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived the things that God has in store for you. But he has revealed them to us by his spirit. So we know it's not going to take us by surprise because we are the ones inviting him. The bride is the one that says, okay, now I'm ready to marry you. The bride always says, you're moving too fast. When you're busy sending nice text messages to a beautiful girl, you're moving too fast. After some point, she says, okay, now nah, I think I'm ready. Yeah? <laughs> Are you getting me? Carry on, Judy. <laughs> so, um, now little faith is uh, lacking confidence. Uh -huh. You just said, trusting too little, uh -huh. uh, to be incredulous. Someone with little faith is concerned with those things Jesus was saying. Food, yeah. shelter, clothes. Jobs. Jobs. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> Money. Yes. Worries. Uh -huh. Worries. Yes. All right. Yeah. Wow, you've done such a good job. I think you should be leading this session. I should be sitting where you're seated. I should be sitting here. Then you just lead this thing. That's one of your gifts. You know, my work is to bring out the gifts inside the bride of Christ. The bride of Christ is supposed to be decorated with gifts before Jesus comes. That's why I keep teaching you. Learn to prophesy yourself. Learn to heal the sick. Learn to do this, learn to do that, because those are the things that decorate the bride. That's how you prepare the bride for Jesus. Yeah. Glory to God. Someone else. Uh, Mr. Bull, anything? Yeah, um, just to add on what uh, Judy has been saying, it's interesting how the topic of faith is fundamental to, to our faith. Yeah. <laughs> the topic of faith is fundamental to our faith. He's a musician. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, um, um, just like the Bible puts it, it's, 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 it's usually, we're not able to, there are times we pray mm -hmm. and things are not happening the way we've prayed, mm -hmm. but just like you've been teaching, it's simply because we do not have enough word in us, mm -hmm. uh, so our words don't really have that much power to cause change, mm -hmm. but the moment we begin to study the word, uh, also to pray and fast, mm -hmm. then, then our words begin to get weighty. Yes. So then, that that is really what faith is in my in my perception exactly. of, of, of 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 the word. You got it. So so once we begin to pray and fast, we can then that the, the, the mustard seed begins to grow mm -hmm. and, and to bear fruit, and now that fruit is when we're able to change circumstances mm -hmm. in our lives. Mm -hmm. um, you're able to lay your hands on the sick and they will be healed. Mm -hmm. and you're able to to stop an accident and say it's not going to happen. Yeah. Like you've given a testimony before and said you were driving uh, with your driver and it was raining, cats and dogs, and you were able to command it to stop and immediately it stopped. Yeah. That's as a result of this amount of faith that you've been able to, to cultivate in your spirit, mm -hmm. without which you, were, you would not have been able to stop that rain. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Beautiful. So guys, do you see it? Christianity is not a struggle. Let me tell you what a struggle is. Your ignorance. That's what the Bible says. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. If you know, you won't get destroyed. The one who knows is the one that leads. I remember last year when my father-in-law went to heaven. The moment he went to heaven, of course, you know what happens. After the burial and all those things, there is the will and there are many things that people need to discuss. So one of the things I told my wife is this. Now that daddy is gone to heaven, that you guys are left to take care of his estate, one of the best things you can do for yourself is get to know what probate is. That process of executing the will, following the will, it's called probate, okay? So I said, study. So my wife and I spent hours on end studying the law concerning the will, how the will is executed, how you get your bequest, that which has been bequeathed to you, 
How do you get it into your name and all those other things? What are the legal processes? I said, the one who has the knowledge is the one who will lead. The one without the knowledge is going to lose everything. And we've seen many examples of fathers leaving beautiful heritage to their children and it all just goes to waste because they didn't know what to do. So I said, not us, we shall study, we shall read, and you know what? We went ahead of the lawyer that we had hired to handle the system, yeah? We went ahead, did all these things until the grant of profit was issued. That is, you are now granted the estate. You understand? Grant of profit, yeah? The lawyer has no clue, the process is complete. So my wife went ahead of the lawyer. Why? Because she was knowledgeable. This is what you ought to do, not just in the things of God, but even in your business. Have you bothered to read about your business? Are you doing further research about your business? The one who has knowledge is the one people will look for in the future. Knowledge is significant. Wonderful. All right, let me cross over to my beautiful girl. Do you have anything to say about little Faith, <laughs> my little girl? Okay, like, okay, for me, little Faith, is mm -hmm. like having um, little information mm -hmm. so like for you to grow your faith you have to get informed mm -hmm. yeah you have to to like read the bible mm -hmm. and also like pray in tongues yes yeah, it, it helps to grow your faith wow yeah she makes it so simple so that people her age can understand <laughs> and simplicity is, is the king i'm telling you if you're a person who complicates things sorry you're gonna lose always make things simple mm -hmm. if you're in a relationship make it easy don't make a relationship difficult. Simplify it. Why do people make things difficult? Ignorance. Ignorant people are difficult. They're difficult everywhere. If you send them, they argue. If you call them, they argue. If you give them money, it's too little. If you give them food, it's too salty. They're always complicated. But a person with knowledge is easy to deal with. So she's made it so easy. Read the Bible, faith will come. Talk in tongues, you build yourself up in your most holy faith. Jude 1 verse 20. Build yourself up in your most holy faith. Wonderful. Proud of you. Okay. My daughter, tell me something about our legal pistols. I have a, a question mm -hmm. and, a, and a statement. Yes. But let me begin by reading Matthew 17, 20 and 21. Mm -hmm. It says, And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Uh -huh. How be it, this is the next verse, uh -huh. how be it this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. So uh -huh. my question is, what is the difference between unbelief and little faith? Okay. Unbelief <laughs> and little faith is one and the same thing. Because the person with little faith will find it difficult doing things God has asked them to do. And if you're not able to accomplish what God has said you to do, that's called unbelief. Okay? So not accomplishing what God has told you to do is... That's unbelief. Unbelief. Like they couldn't cast out the demon. Uh, and Jesus calls that unbelief. Do you remember there's a point where he was chiding them as well because they were scared of the storm? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yeah? Yeah. That's also unbelief. Okay. So any moment you're not operating like God, you're operating in unbelief. Did you get that? Mm. Any moment you're not operating like God, you're operating in unbelief. In other words, you have not got information from him, which gives you the power to do what he asks you to do. So you fail in this thing. Why did you fail in marriage? Because of your unbelief. Why are you failing financially? Because of your unbelief. It's not, it's not because there are no jobs. There are too many jobs. In fact, they are not. There are too many, but you still need to create more. Your unbelief, little information, leads to unbelief. Yeah. You have you, you have a bit of faith, but you cannot cause it to work for you, and that's what Jesus defines as unbelief. So we have believing unbelievers. They believe in Jesus, but they're not able to do what God has asked them to do on the face of the earth. So they're in unbelief and that's what, that's where the danger of going to hell comes in. Because unbelief also is synonymous with fruitlessness. Not bearing fruit. The fruit that makes me love you and makes you love me. 
if you don't have sufficient information, you'll find me difficult to love and you quit on me. You'll find someone else difficult to love and you quit on them. Yet the Bible says it's by your fruit you shall be yada known. God can only have a good intimate relationship with you based on how you bear fruit. So fruitlessness or little fruit is also referred to as unbelief. You see? So how do we deal with unbelief? Fast and pray. Jesus gave the answer there. Fast and pray. And then get the word in. You'll start finding yourself accomplishing the purpose for which you are created. Yeah, is it clear? It does. Because yeah. I was saying here that there, there's an aspect of a little faith can move mountains. Mm -hmm. But in this case, their little faith was not enough to cast out a demon. Mm -hmm. so the mountain saying, was too big. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So you've actually answered my second question, which was about to come from the first. Uh -huh. So fasting and praying is a way, fasting and praying as you read the word, yeah. is a way of opening yourself up to the word mm -hmm. more. Yes. When you fast, you understand the word more. Uh, so that enables you to build your faith more. When you don't fast, you begin to resist the word of God. The things of God become boring. You start wanting entertainment you find that it's, it's easier to watch movies than it is to watch a service like this. You find the things of God, I'm telling you, if you just eat all the time, the things of God will be boring to you. They become boring, they're not palatable anymore. But when you start fasting, you find that you're eager to read the word. The desire to pray is stronger in you. But when you eat, you keep postponing the prayer. So, ever so often fast, my wife and I live a fasted life. So even when we announce to you we are fasting for three days, yeah, we are announcing it so that people can join together with us. But we fast consistently. I mostly live on one meal a day. Yeah. So it's, it's a life of fasting. You control your appetite until food is not controlling. You remember what Judy read. You're concerned about food, what to eat. That's little faith. Are you getting that? When food is such a big thing in your life, it's a sign your faith is little, according to Matthew 6, verse 30. Did you see? If clothes matter to you so much, oh, I don't have an outfit. Why don't you have it? Because your faith is little. You should wear what you want to wear. You should drive the car you want to drive. You should live in the house you want to live in. Because your faith will create these things. He said, if I clothe the trees, the grass, I can clothe you. If I house these birds, I can house you. If I give them food, I can feed you. It's not like God has refused to do these things for you. It's that the, the parameter he uses and the Wi-Fi network he uses finds you out. You've not switched on your, your Wi-Fi. So God is online and you're offline. That's why things are not working. <laughs> you see, you've been given, see, I've taught you before, things work by codes. So God gives you his code, which is his word. And if you apply this word, it will work. What if you don't know the word? What will you apply? So these guys need to know that to cast out the demon, they needed to be fasting. Remember those days they were never fasting. Oh, yeah. The disciples of Jesus were not fasting. And the disciples of John complained about it. Mm -hmm. Your disciples are not fasting. Yet we are always fasting. Our eyes are sunken and cheeks are bony. You know? And you guys are walking around, you know, feeling so good. And then a demon showed up and they could cast this out. And Jesus said, oh, when I go to heaven, they'll fast. And then even their shadows will cast out demons. Do you see? So you cannot afford to ignore fasting. I know ministers God called. They did fast. They did pray. They were just given a gift. It's called idol. You're just aware that you're good at something. And as a result, they thought that everybody's supposed to be like them. Yeah. There are things that happen in your life without you studying or praying. It's a gift. For example, I like joking with my daughter. I like telling her, you didn't do anything. You didn't pray and fast to be beautiful at all. You just grew up and found all. So this is what they call beauty. Oh, okay. You don't even feel it. You people know that you don't feel beautiful. It's until people tell you. It comes by faith too. Knowing you're beautiful also comes by faith. You have to hear it over and over and over again. Until you, you acknowledge, okay, I'm beautiful. Next thing, what should I use my beauty for? That's not fulfilling your calling. You get that? So she didn't do anything to be that. 
she didn't pray and fast. Can you imagine if the gift that she has of height and beauty was prophecy? She would not, she would just be prophesying. And she'll tell people, I didn't pray, I didn't fast, I just started prophesying. That's misleading the church. She's got to understand gifts that are called idol. Mm -hmm. Gifts that come because of awareness. I'm aware that I can run fast. Okay? And then you need to know that God wants you to build up other things. There are things he just gives to you. Like he's given me the gift of music. I don't have to work too hard. Yeah? But I need to work hard to create money using it. Are you getting that? But creating it is easy for me. Monetizing it, I've got to work. God has given me the gift of gab, ability to talk. To monetize it, I've got to work. To talk, I just need to open my mouth. And the words flow. <laughs> you get that? Mm -hmm. So do not confuse election by grace kind of gift, the idol gift, with what we are talking about here. You must fast. You must pray. If the bride is to grow up, properly so i can be great in prophecy or healing but i'm completely weak in marriage or some other area so in that weak area my faith is little and i have to grow it using the word of god and i have to pray and fast that's a really good thing you brought up mm -hmm. yeah Carry on. um so jesus rebuked his disciples for waking him up when he was asleep yeah, they disturbed his sleep. <laughs> they were disturbing the master when he's sleeping. Yeah, they were troubled about the, the storm. And he said, and he said unto them, this is Matthew 8, 26, and he said unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the sea, and there was a great calm. Mm -hmm. So fear is a sign of little, little faith. Little faith, that's right. So you can't fight fear successfully. <laughs> Fear will only leave your life if information enters in. Let me tell you a story about my life. You know, I grew up country, uh, in the countryside. So I did, I did grow up in the city. By the grace of God, I sound like a city boy now. But I, I was those ones. You know how they are that come from a country. Countryside, not exposed whatsoever. My first time in the city, I was amazed at the buildings and how tall they were. And you know when you stand by a building, it looks like it's leaning. Yeah? Because of perspective, if you've studied art. Because of perspective, the way the light, the spectrum of light causes you to see the building, it looks like it's leaning. So I used to get scared, this thing is going to fall. Why can't they prop up the building, you know? Things like that. Because of little faith. But let me tell you where fear really got me. I went for driving school and failed the first time. Don't always think I've always passed exams, yeah? I failed the first time and then I went back and passed it the second time and I didn't have a car because I came from a poor background so we didn't have cars we, we walked we, we used the gift of walking walking in the spirit so <laughs> we walked by faith hallelujah so so here I am God blesses me I begin to make money and I went and bought a car and I had to drive it a second-hand car to drive it from the owner's house to my house Ladies and gentlemen, I did not realize I had fear of that magnitude. I was happy I had a car. The key was given to me and it was night. Because the man didn't want me to drive in traffic. So I got into this car. And ladies and gentlemen, how my right knee and the left knee got attracted to each other, I don't know. It's like there were electric impulses. They would get attracted to each other and then they repel each other. They are trapped and, until I began to shake like that. So I couldn't press the accelerator. Are you getting that? So I'm in the middle of the highway, driving home. I'm on gear one. To take my foot off the gear was impossible because I was shaking. I couldn't change the gears either. So I drove for a, about 25 kilometers on gear one <laughs> because of fear. So the car was complaining, and I just kept going. And I couldn't look sideways because I thought if I look to the left, I will crash. If I look to the right, I will crash. This is the problem with insufficient information. It makes you scared. The car was fine. The car was not going to veer off. I, by the way, I made it home. But the funniest bit is this. Do you know that when you sneeze, you close your eyes? For the first time in my life, I sneezed with my eyes wide open. Achcha! 
<laughs> because I was afraid if I close my eyes for one second, I'm out of the road. Fear is horrible. It makes you do crazy things. So how did I beat the fear? I kept driving. I kept driving. I kept driving. Oh, oh by the way, the next day, I left home going for work with the same car. The next thing I knew, a bus hit me from the back. Boom. I said, oh, these are the things I was afraid of. You see, now they're all happening. <laughs> you see. So I had to take my car to be repaired. So for two weeks, I didn't have my car. And now the fear was much higher because I was hit. You get that? So I had to go and study more about driving. I asked people questions about driving. And they told me, oh, no, even if you leave the steering wheel, the car will not go off the road. I said, are you, are you serious? Yeah. I didn't know, even though I'd gone to school. So I had to study more and more and more until I practiced, you know, in a field, leaving the steering. And the car kept going in one straight direction. I realized I didn't need to, to hold the steering wheel until my nails stick to it. That's what was causing me to shake. Oh, you don't have to hold it so hard. Oh, you don't, you don't have to press the brake so hard until you're almost hitting the windscreen, you know. And I did all these things, but now I'm telling you I'm a good driver because of knowledge. I didn't need to pray about this. I needed information. All right? Wonderful. Carry on. So Jesus equated little faith, the fear, to having little faith. Mm -hmm. So when we are able to, when we build our faith, we are able to overcome fear, yes. which he mentioned a lot in the Bible concerning yes. how we should fear not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wonderful. How beautiful. Okay, let me go to the Queen of Queens. <laughs> Looking also beautiful. Thank you. First of all, I'm just amazed that the disciples of Jesus grew in faith. Hmm. It was his disciples that he's rebuked in these three occasions. In the instance where they brought a child to be healed, mm -hmm. and Jesus says, You don't have um, you need to pray and fast. Yeah. So you could not cast out the demon. In the in the lake when there was a wind and it was so strong. And they had to wake Jesus up so that he could calm the storm. Yeah. It's because they didn't have the faith. Mm -hmm. Now there's another example of the same in Matthew 14 31. Mm -hmm. um, pardon me. In Luke 12 1. Yeah. He says, In the meantime, though I gather together an innumerable uh, multiple of people, insomuch that they trod upon one another. And he began to say unto them, first of all, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which mm -hmm. is hypocrisy. So, in that example, um, the disciples thought that because they had not carried bread, Jesus was rebuking them. Yeah. Yeah, we, um, why didn't you carry bread? But Jesus was saying that the hypocrisy of the uh, Pharisees is what he was rebuking. Mm -hmm. So that the disciples grew in their faith. Yeah. In that particular case, they didn't even understand what Jesus was saying. Yeah. Jesus says, beware of the leaven, or the Pharisees. That means uh, bread that has yeast is called leavened bread. Uh, yeast stands for what? Just read for me the scriptures there. According to prophetic, the prophetic world, what's yeast for? If you see it in a dream or in a vision, yeah? What is yeast, yeah? You go to the scripture itself, Luke 12, 1. Yeah. In the meantime, they were gathered together an innumerable multiple of people in so much that they trod one upon another and began to say to his disciples first of all beware of the leaven of the pharisees which is hypocrisy so beware of the leaven of the pharisees which is hypocrisy so what's leaven so hypocrisy is a sign of little faith are you getting that so you don't stop being a hypocrite grow your faith hypocrisy will go that's one of the the best way to be delivered from things. Mm. You don't stop being afraid. Grow your faith. Hear more of the word. Be a student of the word. Read the word of God. Read, read, read. And then subject yourself to fasting. Fear will leave you. Mm. Look at how I was scared about driving. Because I didn't have in sufficient information. But the moment I got to know, I don't need to press the brakes too hard. I don't need to press the accelerator too hard. You know? I don't need to hold the steering too hard. I don't need to focus my eyes like this. I can even look to the side and go back. Mm -hmm. And the car is still in line. When I realized that, I went like, Whew. you mean it was that easy? Mm -hmm. 
So information makes things easier. Relationships will be easier if you're well informed about them. Oh, men are difficult. Oh, women are difficult. Oh, marriage is hard. The ones outside want to go in. The ones inside want to come out. No, it's because of ignorance. Marriage is easy. Easy if you have the information. All right? That's how it is. Making money is easy if you have the information. If you don't and you think it's all about hard work, uh-uh. Because -uh. I thought driving is hard work. Too, okay? <laughs> it was supposed to be actually easy work, not hard work. There are certain things you need to ease out of. Do much less, you get much more. And there are certain things you need to do much more to get much more. And all this is about information. No. Uh huh. Carry on. Okay. Then another example of Jesus with his disciples mm -hmm. is um, in Matthew 14. Mm -hmm. From I'll read from verse 28. Yes. So um, Jesus has the disciples, and actually, let me take it from 26. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went into them, walking on the sea. Mm -hmm. The disciples were already gone ahead of him in a boat. Yes. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, and they cried for fear. Mm -hmm. But straight away Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Mm -hmm. And Peter answered and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come to thee on the water. And he said, Come. And Peter was come down out of the ship and walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink and cried, saying, Lord, save me. Mm -hmm. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said to him, O thou of little faith, why did you doubt? O thou of little faith, why did you doubt? Oh, I'm in trouble. My business is going down. Oh, I'm in trouble. My health is failing. Oh, you of little faith. It's little faith causing you to go through all that. So what are you supposed to do? Hear the word. Like hearing this now is growing your faith. You get to realize, oh, so you mean I'm not bad after all. So God is not angry with me. So I just need more information. Yes. You don't need to do more repentance. Because the moment you change your mind from a sinful activity, it is recorded in heaven as repentance. Because repentance is change of mind. Mm -hmm. Change of mind. You are going south and you change your mind and say, now I'm going north. That's repentance. So if you're doing something wrong and you realize, oh, I'm doing something wrong. Let me stop the wrong thing. That's called repentance. And you can only know that if you have the information about repentance. Then your faith about dealing with your fault grows. So you know how to deal with your faults as a, at a higher level. Instead of withdrawing, most people withdraw when they're wrong. Most people withdraw when they're rebuked. They withdraw. But the Bible doesn't say that. So you have little faith, you will be hypocritical. You have little faith, you'll find business is crumbling. If it is crumbling, fix it. Start again. Or start another one. Okay? Start again. Remember Peter? Peter was a guy who was erroneous and erratic. He always said the wrong thing. Jesus, at some point, Jesus called him Lucifer. <laughs> get thee behind me, Lucifer. Lucifer, get. <laughs> he was so frustrating. Any moment, Jesus says, okay, the violent take it by force. The guy came with a literal machete. <laughs> Lord, we have two. We have two machetes. Jesus said, it's enough. You are. Man. Enough with your violence, Peter. You see, he always interpreted things of Jesus, literally. The violent take it by force. He nearly cut somebody's head off when Jesus was being arrested. And that guy being a soldier moved his head and Peter went with the ear. And then Jesus took the ear and planted it right back. Do you see? So if you're not able to do some big things, don't think you're smaller than other people. Just grow. All right. I remember I taught some children when I was a teacher. When I see them now, they are, some of them are medical doctors, top lawyers, doing big, big things. And I remember a specific one that used to climb on my back, a little girl. I was teaching in a kindergarten of five-year-olds. And this girl, every time I would kneel down, see, little kids always sit on carpets. I would kneel down to do things. We call them manipulatives. 
the things they use to learn tactile stuff how to hold how to pour how to how to shake things and all that so every time i knelt down she would climb on my back right up to my neck and then she would pinch my cheeks she'd say why you're chubby why you're chubby why you're chubby now recently <laughs> recently i met the same girl a lawyer professional prosperous successful looking beautiful i looked at her paint her cheeks and said why you're chubby <laughs> <laughs> and then we took a selfie together you see she grew her knowledge from why you're chubby to a professional now can you stop feeling sorry for yourself and just grow your faith like the americans say do it real suddenly real right now like do it already yeah <laughs> just do it don't feel bad that your business failed. Don't feel bad that your marriage failed. Don't feel bad that you're not married yet. You don't have a job yet. Start doing something about it. Grow your little faith by getting information. Go to Google. Read the right things. Don't be a consumer when you're online. Instead, be a student when you're online. Did you hear that? A student will grow their faith. A consumer will just spend money. Always on YouTube, getting entertained. Learn. YouTube is a, a place for learning. All right? I think that should be enough for today, yeah? Yes. Have we? Have we? Okay. Uh, Judy, you have something? You had okay. a question, so let her. Okay, let her speak, then yeah. you can ask your question. Okay. I think the, the same disciples, just like you talked about Peter. Yeah. The, Peter grows so much, and in the book of Acts, yes. he's the one championing, um, championing the church. Yes. And moving in signs and wonders. So I just want to read one, one last scripture from Acts. Mm -hmm. Acts um, 5.15 says, In so much that they brought the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing on them might overshadow some of them. Wow. Yeah. So this guy who Jesus was rebuking all the time, carrying machetes, always saying the wrong thing, if that defines you, don't give up. Mm -hmm. You're the one who's always doing the wrong things. Don't give up. That was Peter. Yeah? Always saying the wrong thing. Jesus, you're not going to the cross. You're too good a man to die like that. Jesus, are you Lucifer? <laughs> Have you ever been called Lucifer? You. Peter was called Lucifer. But he grew until his shadow started healing the sick. So you can grow too. You know, some of you think these apostles who wrote the Bible for us, they're unreachable, unbeatable, yeah, invincible, impregnable. What? They were like you. The Bible says Elijah was a man of like passions, even as you. And he prayed from, you know, uh, fervently that it wouldn't rain for three and a half years and it never rained. Then he prayed again and it rained. So you have to grow, 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 be encouraged. You'll make it if you're consistent in your consumption of the word of God in prayer and in fasting yes you will do yes so mm -hmm. my question is just briefly touch on a uh, little faith mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to guilt shame malice wickedness being impatient uh -huh. just, just talk about that. guilt shame malice wickedness being impatient all those are definitions of a person operating under little faith they are christians but they're still malicious little faith now, if this person is moving in signs and wonders, th that's now the gift of faith. Remember the gift we were mm -hmm. talking about the other day? Mm -hmm. The gift of faith can cause you to be so good in something without you having to do anything about it. That's not all we're dealing with here. And that will not take you to heaven. That's why the Bible says that, um, but Lord, we perform miracles in your name mm -hmm. and we heal the sick. And Jesus says, I don't know you. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, by your fruit, you're known. So Jesus knows you by the fruit, and the fruit comes when you build up your faith. When your faith grows, the mustard seed can now become mature, producing flowers and bearing fruit or seed. You understand? So it can replicate. You cannot replicate without a seed. There's no seed without a fruit. Did you get that? So if you're not bearing the fruit of love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, long-suffering, and all that, you cannot have seed, so you cannot replicate. You cannot... You cannot propagate the gospel because propagation and replication is through a seed and the seed comes out of a fruit and the fruit comes out of the word born again not of corruptible seed but in corruptible seed which is the word planted in you and then you grow so maliciousness and 
all those negative traits you've mentioned found in Galatians 5 to 19 the works of the flesh they're called the works of the flesh are a sign that your faith is little if you grow that faith rather than trying to stop the bad behavior you will make it here is where Christians go wrong let's take some for example someone's addicted to alcohol so they say beginning today I'm not drinking you are fooling yourself the only way you're going to stop that thing is if you grow your faith get information yeah if you grow if you concentrate on growing the faith the habits will drop if you concentrate on dropping the habit the faith will drop the habit will grow where you look is where you go so if your focus is on your weakness you grow the weakness but if your focus is on information information will overshadow the weakness so if I'm angry I can only learn not to be angry or hot-tempered if I grow emotionally because being hot-tempered is a sign of emotional immaturity that's what makes you malicious and wicked that's what makes you talk badly to hurt people your word pulls people down but if you grow your emotion and emotion is grown when you open yourself up to be loved see when you open yourself up to be loved people will see your faults and they'll start pointing them out and calling them out if you're a fool you retract if you're wise come forth even more say oh my goodness for the first time people are showing me how to grow so you may think you're so great in a certain area but suddenly everybody is criticizing you calling out your bad behavior it means now your heart is open to be loved so the negative things that stop you from being loved are exposed when when you put the light of the word there and you grow and your shame and embarrassment goes down another sign of little faith shame and embarrassment you are, you're so ashamed that you're you're corrected for example or you're so ashamed that somebody caught you doing something wrong you should never be ashamed once all these things are out and love enters you you mature when you mature your relationships work because your faith in relationships has grown if your faith in relationships grow you cannot be malicious because malice is the enemy of relationships slander gossip wickedness all those crazy things hypocrisy you cannot be a hypocrite and have a good relationship you have to be sincere and truthful to have a good relationship but sincerity and truth could also mean that you tell somebody something they don't want to hear but you still must tell them anyway because you're not afraid of them see I cannot love my wife if I'm full of fear if I'm full of fear and then I see her weakness I'll run away from her but if I'm not a man of fear but of faith and I see a weakness I'll say okay I'm gonna pump the word in that area mm. until she grows in that area instead of saying hey I'm not going to be close to you anymore you see if you meet somebody who's hot tempered and then you do something and they blow up you say you know what from now onwards I'm going to avoid this fellow you are also a person of little faith because by avoiding them, you'll go out there slandering them. Hey, you've never met that fellow. That guy has a hot temper. That guy, could, his temper could boil an egg. I'm telling you. You're malicious. Instead, pump the word in there. And that temper will be overtaken by the word. Don't tell people, stop being hot temper. Stop being angry. Stop fornicating. Teach them the word. The word will stop them from fornicating. Unless somebody already has the word and they're ignoring it. In that case, rebuke that spirit. Say, stop it in Jesus' name. Yeah, there's a time for rebuke. You know the person has the word, but they're ignoring the word. They're not putting it to practice. Okay? So that's it. Bless? Yes. Wonderful. Are you all blessed? Yes. Is this building you up? Yeah. I hope you're blessed as well. Glory to Jesus forevermore. So we're going to hear my beautiful girl. We're going to watch her again doing her beautiful song on healing virtue. Okay? And please share this widely. And then follow us on Twitter, Instagram, on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go to ApostleJosephAllon.org. There's information there. I'm going to post this message on my Facebook page for you to read again. Read over and over again for your faith to grow from little to great. We love you so much. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. I'll be teaching you about faith for finances, wisdom for finances, how to make money. We are building the body of Christ. We're building the bride of Christ. So you need to learn how to make money. So I'll see you tomorrow. You're wonderful. 
Blessings. I love you so much. Bye-bye.
tender mercy has touched my soul. Full of compassion, my precious Savior, we can feel your
Your tender mercy has touched my